the angel of the Lord, declare that to me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, Holy Mother of God, that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, for forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's Mass offered for the repose of the souls of Tina Esposito, Ed Mendoza, and Peter Moore. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins <laughs> and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I am greatly honored in, in my thoughts, in my, in my words, in, in what I have done, done in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. So may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in, in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. O God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only God the Son, Lord God, you do take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You do take away the sins of the world, you see our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you are the Lord of the Holy One, you are the Lord of the Lord, you are the Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, God. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. We ask this through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, 
saw another angel come from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Praise the responsorial song. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, Lord this is the people that to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, Lord this is the people that to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks him, that seeks the face in of the God of Jacob. Lord, Lord, the second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet, so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice, be glad. 
Your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Feast of All Saints. It places us in the world that we cannot see. We can only see the things of our world. And then we're limited at that. Are you nearsighted? Are you farsighted? How far can we see? But for everyone, there's only a certain distance we can see. And then after that, no matter how good your eyesight, it all becomes blurry. So our vision, even of the things of this world, are, is limited. There is God's world. And our vision of God's world is almost non-existent, except sometimes we can feel the things of God's world. Sometimes in a moment praying, sometimes in a moment at Mass, sometimes maybe in a moment of praying while you're walking along the beach, we can almost feel the things of God's world, but we can't see them. However, they are there. And if the veil was lifted, if whatever it is that limits our vision of God and the world of God, if that were lifted, what would we see? The picture I put there in front of St. Joseph, it's a catechetical picture. It's something that was used years ago to teach children about heaven. And what the picture shows, it shows in the middle, the priest is saying mass. Around him, people, those who believe, are praying during the mass. Above, the saints in heaven are also praying the Mass, and they're making gestures as they pray the Mass. God is in the middle, and they're pointing down to us who are going to the Mass. And below are the souls in purgatory, and they're looking up, waiting for the grace of that Mass to take them out of purgatory. It's a vision of God's world without the divides, without the membranes that prevent us from seeing God's world and what goes on in God's world. But it teaches us that we're touched by what is happening. Tomorrow we'll talk about how the souls in pur purgatory are touched by our prayers. Even though we can't see that world, our prayers penetrate. The sacraments penetrate the veil. Today is all saints. There are saints in heaven who pray for us. And that's what the picture is showing us. When you come to Mass, the veil, between God's world and our world is lifted here. It's like when the Mass is going on, even though we can't see it, our sight is limited. The divide between us and God is lifted. If you go to some of the very old churches, they do something that reminds us of that. You look up at the ceiling inside the old church. And they're going to do one of two things. On the ceiling, they're going to paint blue sky and clouds. So that when you look up, it's like there's no roof. It's like you're looking up and your, your vision is penetrating beyond the roof to God's world, blue sky and clouds. Or well, sometimes the Gothic churches, like St. Patrick's in New York, what they do is they paint 
night sky, dark blue, and then stars. But again, the idea is no roof, the separation that keeps us, our vision from seeing God's world is removed. And in this moment, here in church, when Mass is said, God's world comes into our world. The saints there in heaven are here right now as we pray this Mass. Who are they? They are people who were motivated by love of God. They had one purpose in life, to bring other people to God. They want only for us to get to heaven. What is the motivation of a saint? Think of a parent. Do you have children? What is your motivation towards your children? One thing. You want them to be reasonably happy in this world, and you want them to get to heaven. You want only one thing for your children. You want good for your children. And their needs, their welfare, their mistakes, their sicknesses, their troubles are yours. And you carry them with you. Saints are the same thing. They want only one thing for us. They want us to get to heaven. They want only one thing for us. They want us to be reasonably happy in this world. So their motivation is the same as a parent's <clears throat> motivation, only truly we're not their children. In a sense, saints adopt us and we adopt them. As you go through life, as you learn about your Catholic faith, you hear the story, a sermon is given on the story of one saint and who they were and what they did and what their struggles were. And if you really want to get into it, <clears throat> sometimes you can read what they wrote and about their struggles <clears throat> and their lives. You read that, you hear the story of the saint told, and you say, gee, I got the same struggle. Hmm. My personality is kind of like this saint's personality. The story of this saint touches me. And then all of a sudden you kind of turn to that saint and you say, would you be my friend? I have this need. I have this challenge in my life. Maybe it's a patron who is known to take care of people who have a particular sickness, like St. Peregrine with cancer victims, like St. Jude for impossible causes, like St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta for periods of dryness when we don't feel God's presence in our lives. So you turn to the saint and you say, you're in heaven, I'm here. Would you be my friend? Would you help me? Would you go to God and would you ask him to help me? He's pleased with you. You, you didn't sin. You're a good person. Maybe if I ask him, he's not that pleased with me. You ask him for me as well. I will ask him, but I'm going to ask you to be on my side. So we make a connection. For whatever reason, we make a connection with a particular saint. And that saint in heaven watches over us and they pray for us. And in those moments, like now, when the veil between God and us is going to be lifted, when God's <coughs> grace will come to us, his strength will come to us in the Mass as we pray it. The saints are there in heaven, watching the Mass as well. And just like the picture shows, they're kind of pointing down, looking at God and pointing to us. Help them. Give them strength. Take care of them. Bring them safely to heaven. 
in a sense, saints don't retire. Let's go back to the comparison of a parent who wants only the good of their child. There comes a point when your child grows up, or they should grow up, some don't, but they're supposed to grow up. And when they get to be a certain age, your relationship with them has changed. Uh, you don't have to worry about whether they brush their teeth anymore. They're big boys and girls. They gotta do that on their own. If there's a major crisis, it's going to affect you, but actually their everyday lives, you've done your best to give them the means of survival, and they're working out their own lives, but they're part of your life. But in a sense, from the major worries, from the major concerns, uh, if they have the flu, it's really his wife's concern. Uh, it's not yours that much anymore. You get to retire a little bit from all the stress of parenting. The saints have chosen not to retire. They go to heaven, they don't get a rest. They go to heaven, and it's not a matter of, well, I'm just going to relax and enjoy whatever it is God has to show me. The saints in heaven continue to work. What was their motive? To see that we're reasonably happy in this life. What was their purpose? To watch over us so we get to heaven. That stress never leaves them. They never get rest. When someone dies, what are the prayers that we say? Eternal rest granted to them, O oh Lord. Lord, give them peace now. All the stress of life is gone. But the saints, the stress of life isn't gone. They continue for all eternity, as long as there are people, as long as there are people who will turn to someone and say, I know you're in heaven. Would you be my friend and help me? Would you be my friend and ask God to watch over me? They, for all eternity, continue their motive of love for us. So it's the feast of all saints, the ones we know, the ones we may not know. But it also has a greater meaning for us. It places us in the world, and it reminds us there are things that I can see in this world, but not that much. Even in this world, my vision is very limited. But there are things of God's world that I cannot see, but I know and I can feel. And this reminds me of how the world of heaven reaches down and touches my world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God. Amen.
nothing unclean can stand in the presence of God. We are reminded with today's feast that each of us is called to our heavenly home. We ask God and the saints to continue their protection over us. The response to each petition will be, Lord have mercy, that God will give the necessary graces to those in authority to lead saintly lives so that we may follow their example in giving glory to God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That all of our relatives and friends who have gone before us to God's judgment may be assisted by our prayers and mortifications to take their place in the court of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God will watch over and protect our servicemen and women throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all young men and women who God is calling to the religious life, that they will have the courage to answer his call and become priests and sisters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick of the parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deceased family and friends, especially Edward A. Perko Jr., and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God, who wills that all men be saved and give eternal praise to your glory. May we live your beatitudes so that in the not distant future, we will become part of that vast multitude of saints who attest to your holiness and glory. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In observance of the Feast of All Saints Day, the parish center will be closed Friday, November 1st. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us bread of life. By the mystery, this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who did humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, Work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> With humble spirit, contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Again, let us pray. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant them, just as we believe, the saints to be already assured of immortality, we may experience their concern for our salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty eternal god for today by your gift we celebrate the feast of your holy city the heavenly jerusalem our mother where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise towards 
her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims, advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church, through whom you give us in our weakness both strength and good example. So we glorify you with multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sanctus, Venus of Cherry et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, we made it in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed, O oh Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come back. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. <clears throat> Have mercy on us all, we pray, with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise 
and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. From the kingdom of God, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. <coughs> us who receive it. Amen. On you, Sergei, we call this Pekatamundi, Isarebe, Nobis. On you, Sergei, we call this Pekatamundi, Isarebe, Nobis. On you, Sergei, we call this Pekatamundi, Dona Nobis. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.